Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another week of school. Um, you might know I'm not in school today. Um, I'm not in school because I've got COVID. Um, I'm absolutely fine, actually. I feel OK, um, but I can't be in school for the next few days. So I won't see you around school, but you're still going to see me this morning. Bad luck. Um, we've been thinking in assemblies about courage this term and the importance of showing courage in different situations and when to show courage and when maybe even not to show courage. I'd like to think about that a bit more today uh, and I wanted to tell you a story. Today's story comes from a long time ago. It comes from the time of the ancient Greeks. Well, the ancient Greeks told this story about people who lived even before them, back in the time we call the Bronze Age. So that's back before Jesus was born and then back another 2000 years. The story happened on this beautiful island in the Mediterranean Sea called Crete. It's an island of fishing villages and beautiful beaches today and it was all that long time ago but on Crete you can find lots of ancient ruins of a long lost fabulous civilization and this was the place and the time where the famous story of the Minotaur comes from and you might have heard the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. Theseus uh, found his way to the middle of a complicated maze where there lived a fearsome monster called the Minotaur and he killed it. Here are some of the palaces uh, on Crete where King Minos, the king of Crete, lived in absolute splendour in the middle of a big city and they traded with people far and wide and King Minos was very, very rich. When Theseus defeated the Minotaur, King Minos was very angry about it. He was very angry because he knew somebody must have given away the secret of how to find the way in and out of the maze. And the only person who could have done that was the person who created the maze. And that person was a very famous designer and engineer whose name was Daedalus. So King Minos captured Daedalus and put him in prison along with his son, Icarus. And this is the story of Daedalus and Icarus. Daedalus sat in prison with his son, trying to think of a way to escape. But he knew that he didn't just have to escape the prison. He had to escape the island of Crete. Otherwise, King Minos would find him again very quickly. And that was more difficult. Well, part of the cell he was in allowed him outside, but only onto a rooftop at the very top of a tower. And the sheer sides of the tower fell away all around him and there was no way anybody could climb down. But what Daedalus did was he befriended the birds, giving them little pieces of his food, the dry bread that they fed him and Icarus on day after day. And he tempted the birds to come to him. And eventually the birds allowed him to start removing the occasional feather. Sometimes the feathers fell out by themselves. And so slowly Daedalus collected a supply of feathers. Now he also liked to read at night and he asked the guards nicely if they could give him candles. Well, secretly, he used the wax from the candles to join together the feathers from the birds. And over a long, long time, he secretly made two pairs of wings. And when the wings were ready, the plan was to use them to fly from the prison castle tower. Well, on the day of the flight, Daedalus called Icarus to him and explained something very important. Icarus, he said, listen, when we are flying, there are two things you must not do. First of all, 
you must not go too close to the sea. If you do that, the water and the salt from the sea will make the feathers clog together. And if they do that, they won't work anymore. And you'll crash into the sea. And the second thing is you mustn't fly too high. Because if you fly too high, then the heat of the sun will melt the wax and the wings will fall apart and you will crash into the sea. OK, Dad, said Icarus, that's fine. I, I won't do either of those. I'll just I'll stick with you. I'll follow you. We'll, we'll be fine. Are you sure? Said Daedalus. Oh, yeah, said Icarus. No problem. And so. Trusting his father and following his father. Icarus and Daedalus jumped off the roof of the castle tower. And they began to fly. They found it worked. They soared, something maybe like a hand glider. They soared and they twisted and they turned and nobody even noticed they'd gone. And they started to head off away from the island of Crete towards another island where they would be safe. Now Daedalus just kept gliding and turning and soaring and really doing everything properly. Icarus was very excited. He was young. He wasn't really thinking. He got so excited that he started to forget what his dad said. He went higher and higher. Look at me, dad, look at me. This is brilliant. This is great fun. Whee, whee, whee. And he went up and he went up. No, called Daedalus, come back down, back down. It's okay, said Icarus, it's fine, I'll be fine. And he flew higher and higher and higher. And eventually, exactly what Daedalus had said would happen, did happen. Icarus's wings began to melt and fall apart. And he fell down and into the sea. Well, last week we heard about Jonah who fell down into the sea and he was rescued. Well, you can make up your own ending to this story, whether Icarus was rescued or not. How do you think the story should end? Should it end in tragedy with Icarus drowning? to teach us the lesson? Or do you feel sorry for the people in it and would you prefer it if the story ended with everybody being rescued and being safe? You decide. What about that story though? There were two things that Icarus was told to be wary of. Two things he was told not to do. As long as you stay between the sea and the sun and you don't do too close to this one and you don't do too close to this one you'll be all right stay within those limits and everything will be okay that was the message he didn't did he he thought he'd be okay if he didn't he thought he could go somewhere else and do something different and it would be fine and he was wrong Sometimes we all think like that. We think we know best. And as we grow up and we learn and our thinking develops, well, we learn more about that. And that's really important in school. It's one of the most important things we do is that we teach you how to think. And part of teaching you how to think is how to think about what's safe and what isn't safe. So when we encourage you to be courageous, to have courage, we're probably telling you that actually this is safe. This is OK. You don't need to worry about it. But there are other things that we maybe need to tell you. Yes, you do need to worry about it. That is something you need to worry about. And sometimes when you're young, you don't really know what are the things I need to worry about. And what are the things I don't need to worry about? And so that's one of the important jobs that the grown ups are here to help you with, to learn, to understand what's safe and what's not safe and what you should worry about and what you don't need 
to worry about. So um, some of year six are doing bikeability to teach them how to be safe on the road. Um, some of you younger ones are going to be doing walk safe training soon, teaching you how to be safe walking on the roads. When some of you uh, did fire lighting outside recently, well, behind that, somebody had thought about all the safety. Somebody had written down all the things that might go wrong and what we'd do if they did go wrong and how we'd stop them going wrong to make sure that it was as safe as it could possibly be. And then we did it. Was it still risky? Yeah, it was still a bit risky, but we did it anyway. Somebody asked this once, what is courage? Without risk, it wouldn't really be courage, would it? No, it wouldn't. Because, you know, there's always risk. Whatever we do, there's always risk. So we always need courage. Here's something somebody else said about courage. That courage is the most important of all the virtues. We could say the most important of all our values. Because without courage, we can't practice any of the others. So what she means is to be kind takes courage. To be independent takes courage. To show respect can take courage and to show love can need a great deal of courage. Being creative and different can sometimes take a lot of courage. Sometimes fear, which is the opposite of courage, fear can stop us doing the things that we know we should. And that's why we need courage. But when we're courageous, let's be courageous like Daedalus, who knew what the risks were, rather than courageous like Icarus, who didn't pay any attention to the risks. Daedalus survived. Icarus might have done, depending on the version of the story that you chose for yourself. Let's finish today by saying a prayer together. Dear God, help us to have courage to do all the things that we should do. Help us to have courage to show respect and love and creativity and independence and kindness to one another this week. Help us to learn to understand what's risky and what's not, what we need to worry about and what we don't need to worry about. Help us to worry about the right things and help us not to worry about the things that we don't need to worry about. Amen. Well, this week, you might like to have a think or a talk about things that you do need to worry about and things that you don't need to worry about. It's always good to talk about that. Um, I remember when I was six, I learned that lesson. Uh, about lunchtime in school, I broke my shoelace and I worried about it all afternoon and I was really really upset because I thought I would be in loads of trouble. I thought I would need a new pair of shoes and my mum would be really cross with me. And when I saw her I was in floods of tears and she said what's the matter what's the matter? I never broke my shoes and she said she said no oh, never mind you can buy new shoelaces and I said what well, without buying new shoes? And she says, yes, they're really cheap. Oh, and I can still remember the feeling of relief because it was so huge. I thought I was going to need new shoes and I didn't. 
and I thought I was going to be in massive trouble and I wasn't and I thought it was all my fault and it wasn't and I was really worried and I didn't need to worry but until I talked to somebody about it I didn't know if I'd have told my teacher my teacher would have told me but I didn't tell my teacher either I just kept it inside and worried well that's an example have a think about that and have a talk about things that worry you to find out whether you need to worry about them or not I usually say see you around school but I'm not going to say that today I'm going to say see you around school next week bye for now